Raider Nation, what is going on? Eddie Pascal here back with a very, very special episode of Upon Further Review brought to you by our pals at Coors Light. It is our Pro Bowl Spectacular, and I had to bring my guy in from News hey. 3 here in the desert, Jesse Merrick. Jesse, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well, man. I'm ready to talk some Pro Bowl numbers. It's pretty cool. Yes, it is very, very cool. So let us start here. The Silver and Black have three Pro Bowlers this year. I think a good number. We will get to the snubs later on. I promise you that. Uh, the three guys that are going to be representing the Silver and Black at the Pro Bowl this year, which coincidentally will be at Allegiant Stadium. Gotta love that. Yes, gotta love it. Are the following. Devontae Adams, Max Crosby, who is a starter, more on that in a second, and Josh Jacobs. So when we look at the totality of the trio, which is a fun one to say, yeah. Jesse, uh, fair, unfair, how do you kind of come down on, on the three? I think it's fair. You know, when you look at it and what this team has done so far and the guys that have led the way, it's those three guys. I mean, I, you know, in terms of uh, offense and defense, I don't think there's any other guys that you can really name that are like, man, I can't believe they didn't make it in from this team. Uh, so I think if you're a fan of, and if you're a member of Raider Nation, you got to be happy with this, and you got to be like, yeah, hey, look, these were the guys I had on my ballot to get to the Pro Bowl, you know. So I, I think that's fair for them. Yeah, I'm with you, and, and I kind of kind of echo what you said, where you really look at, at this team in 2022, and the three guys that are going to be representing the team are really the catalyst for everything that the Raiders yeah. have done successfully, right? Exactly. Devonte Adams once again having another historic season, his first as a Raider. Max Crosby playing out of his mind, you know, <laughs> by any type of metric you want to see, yeah. and then Josh Jacobs perhaps like the surprise of 2022, who leading, leading the league in rushing and really the engine that has made this offense go this season for your 2022 Las Vegas Raiders. But Jesse, let us start in alphabetical order with our pal Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams, as of right now, 86 receptions, 1,275 yards, 12 touchdowns, averaging nearly 15 yards a reception. I mean, the guy is unreal. He has done. He has been everything and then some that we thought he was going to be uh, when he arrived this spring. Yeah, I think those numbers are all right, right? Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad With at what, all. What three man. to go, right? Yeah, three, three to go. To go. Yeah. You know, I was looking through all these ones, and you know, we're looking at all the different, you know, where that ranks in the NFL and everything like that. And I mean, this guy has been balling out. You know, all the talk in the off season when he's coming here is, oh, well, now that he's leaving Aaron Rodgers, his numbers aren't going to be the same. Well, that was the biggest ball don't lie right there mm -hmm. for Devontae Adams coming in here, leading the league in touchdowns, thirty yard receptions, two receive two touchdown receiving games, and then also again having a second there in a hundred yard receiving games. And it feels like it could be even more, which is insane, you know? And so this guy has come and been anything and everything that Raider Nation could have hoped that he would be, uh, you know. So I I'm just excited for the fans uh, to be able to see, you know, what the future holds for him. But obviously we're talking about right now. So, you know, what he's done has just been nothing short of amazing. And, and let's just start right there where you said that he's really been everything that the fans expected him to be. And I think we need to focus on that for a sec because, and I don't want, not throwing shade at anyone across no. the league, but the reality is sometimes these big dogs, whether they're free agents, trades, however they're acquired to their new teams, it takes them a minute to kind of get into the swing of things. Perhaps that first year, that first two years aren't up to expectations and what yeah. the general consensus thinks and wants them to be. It couldn't be farther from the truth with Devontae. No, it definitely couldn't be. You know, and I think you also got to look at some of the guys, you know, when they come in, is this like, is it a system? And, mm -hmm. and it would have been easy to think, well, hey, with Devontae and Aaron Rodgers, maybe it's the quarterback that's doing it. But when you look at him, the way that he runs his routes, it's just filthy. I mean, he's deep, he's routing guys up left and right. Uh, it's insane. You see so many guys getting left behind. To me, it comes to mind uh, the Denver game, you know, when he's just like torching guys. Uh, and hey, look at that, right on cue, actually. Yes. Got the video look of at that production. Everything. Yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, him, he does that day in and day out. They talk about as a receiver, you have to make every route look exactly the same and he does just that and it's also bled through the rest of the receiving core I mean look at Matt Collins having a great yeah. year you know alongside with him so you know uh, what this guy is able to do on the football field is incredible and also we talked about this these numbers that he has you know it, it, it's not like they're in garbage time these are all tight games. So, like, he's doing this when it matters. It's not just like, well, hey, we're, you know, we're down by four touchdowns. We're just going to start chucking it. You know, this guy is doing it, and they're legit numbers. And I think we talk about the legitimacy of those numbers and how wild those numbers are in a historical context, and we'll talk about that in a sec. But let's not forget that there's been games, there's been halves, where the defense has essentially said, Devontae Adams, you are not going to beat us. Yeah. And, and we look at Devontae, there's been six games this year where he's had five or fewer receptions. And I think that is a credit to defense's understanding that he is the biggest, baddest, dog on the offense side of the football in terms of the receiving core yeah. for the Raiders and say, hey, we're not going to let you beat us. And so to Devontae's credit, if he's not getting nine, ten chances, if he's getting three, four, five, 
what we've seen is he makes the absolute most of each and every one of those chances. Yeah, he definitely has. And it, that, to me, is incredible just for the simple fact you said that. I mean, there's been multiple times that I'm watching the game, and I'm like, where is the guy? Yeah. Which is crazy to still look at the numbers that he's managed to put up when that's the case. Uh, and that, to me, it, it just makes it even that much more impressive what he's been able to do uh, in taking advantage of the opportunities he does that he does have. He's had plenty of games where he's getting double-digit targets. But as you noted, some where it's like, you know, the way and the flow of the offense, <clears throat> excuse me, the way things are going there, it, you're wondering, you know, okay, when they're going to start feeding them the ball more. Uh, and then when they do, he always seems to come through in those situations, you know, and that's that's why he's a pro bowler and why he's done it so many times throughout his career. Yeah, six pro bowls now yeah. for Devontae Adams, and I think he's got a few more left in the – I'd uh, imagine so. Yeah, a few more left in the chamber <laughs> before all is, un, all is said and done. But I think that when we look at what Devontae has done in a historical context here yeah. uh, in his first season as a Raider, I mean, we pull up these these notes here, Jesse. Crazy. Uh, in 2022, 12 touchdowns uh, – excuse, yeah, excuse me, yes, tied for first. Uh, we talk about 30-plus receptions, tied for first. Two receiving, uh, two receiving touchdown games, he's got four of them. But when we go down directly to the silver and black, yeah. he's He's got 12 touchdowns. Raiders record is 16. Crazy. Right? He's got 86 receptions. Raiders record is 107. Friend of the program, Darren Waller, has got that. Receiving yards, 1,408. He's now getting pretty close to that. Mm -hmm. Tim Brown. So you look at the history of this place, right? 60-plus years, and we talk about the rich history specifically at the wide receiver position. And Devontae has been here for, what, all of eight months, nine months, and he is already in those conversations. And I think it's a credit to him. It's a credit to Derek for giving him his opportunities, a credit for Josh McDaniels for understanding what he has uh, in Devontae Adams. And let's not forget, a credit to Zave Ziegler for being like, yo, that's the guy we need to go get and going out, going out and getting him. Yeah, as you noted so many times in free agency, we see these guys come in and then they disappear. They're a shell of themselves. You know? So they managed to find the guy – uh, you know, that's getting it done. The guy that is is what they thought they would, what they thought he would be. Uh, and I'm looking at these numbers, and as you noted, like year one, like year one, it's, that's the big one, right? Yeah. Put it in big bold letters, year one. Exactly, like that's a very much. And, and you know, Devontae's not a big stats guy. You know, he says that all the time. But you know, at the end of the day, he probably he's like, if he sees these numbers, he's probably like, yeah, that's right. You know, and he's like, I'm gonna break these records, and then I'm gonna break my own records in the years to come. Is probably his mindset that he's mindset that he's got. It's also got to be pretty wild for him, just as like an individual that we yeah. we've heard the story all the time grows up a Raiders fan, right? Yeah, he's so in, cool. He's in the Seawood jersey, all that kind of stuff. But then to see yourself literally nine months into this new, incredibly exciting chapter for yeah. you, to be rewriting the history book for the team that you grew up watching, I mean, like that's like the Disney Channel version of, of everything that's going on. Here. It really is. And, and again, just continue with the thread about you know, the records within the team and everything like that. Let, let's be completely honest about what the offense has been at times this year. It's a run it's first a, offense. Exactly. Yeah. Like that's the thing. And that's when we get to Josh Jacobs. That's why it's even more incredible that the numbers have been what they are for him. And, and also for the simple fact of like, you know, this offense has disappeared at times, mm -hmm. but this guy is still putting up these type of numbers. You know, imagine when this offense is humming at a more consistent pace, it's kind of what we all think it's going to be. Uh, you know, once they get to that point, man, this guy's going to be incredible. You know, and again, it, it just to me, I know we keep saying it, but in year one, and, and looking at this one, I think he breaks all these records, you know, this season in terms of, uh, you know, franchise history here. The only one that I think is in question is the touchdown record because it yep. pours a lot in three games. Yeah, I mean, but if anyone can do it, it's Devontae. Yeah. I mean, we talk about 21 receptions over the course of three games. That's what, about seven per, yeah. doing my math real quickly. Easy for me there. Yeah, exactly. I think the receiving yards one is, is just only a matter of time before yeah. that one falls. Uh, he's already he's going to have sole, uh, I would imagine, at some point, sole possession of the 100-plus yard receiving games. And this is all, I think, like we said, in big, bold letters. Year one, yeah. when the collective offense is trying to figure it out a little bit. Exactly. So year two for this guy, where he's a year more comfortable, when you figure some of the things on the offense side of the football that you want to be a little bit better are going to be a little bit better. Yeah. Scary. It's going to be very scary. Also, too, if he does break those records, he's going to make a lot of fantasy manager managers very yeah. happy, too. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I'm out, so it doesn't matter for me. But for all the other managers out there, you know, they're going to be very happy. Yeah, speaking of people that have been happy and the fans have been happy with switching to the defensive side of the football now, yeah. Jesse, Max Crosby uh, going to Pro Bowl number two for him. And I think he's got the, the really nice designation. He's the only Raiders starter in the Pro Bowl. So just to clarify yeah. that, so essentially what that means is Max has now been voted as one of the two best defensive ends in the AFC, incredibly well-deserved, I think. Yes, very much so. No doubt about it. Uh, again, as we noted with Devontae, like, you knew this guy was getting in. But to me, what's so impressive about what he's managed to do this year is what he did last year, and he's following it up. He's still getting the attention. We saw Chandler Jones, just from a stats perspective, through the first 11 weeks, not really having you know the, the impact that many people thought they would. And so, obviously, Max is the guy that gets all the attention. 
but he's still put up these crazy numbers, and he's doing with that high motor, you know, nonstop all the time with that dude that's got the battery in his back, the Energizer, you know, battery back there that just doesn't stop. Uh, so to me, it's so impressive that he's continued to do this and is stacking back-to-back years on top of it. It wasn't just a flash-in-the-pan type of deal. Yeah, and I think just in a kind of a bigger, like, macro perspective, Max is in the minority, I think it's fair to say, of guys that get paid, of get the that get the big paycheck, mm-hmm. and then get better afterwards. I mean, how many times have we seen across the, sport, the course of, of professional sports in general, guys get the bag, right, that big direct deposit hits, and A, maybe they're not the version of themselves that they were before the money came. Max is the complete opposite. Matt is the, Max is the exception to that rule, where he is better this year than he was last year. And he's got the nice chains now. I think the car's probably gotten a little nicer. The house gotten a little bit bigger. But one thing that is not changed is that relentless effort. And you brought up a great fact where, you know, the reality is for large portions of this season, it feels like the Raiders' defense, especially along the defensive line, has been Max Crosby plus 11 of his buddies. Yeah. Right? So if you're in a, a scheming against him as an offensive coordinator, you say, we got to take away 98. If we got to do one thing today, we're going to take him away and give Mac credit because it hasn't been very successful a lot of the time. No, it hasn't. And also, too, you look at the numbers that they just showed up there, they could be higher because think of how many holding Mm. penalties that have not been called or that have been called on him as well, even too. The guy's number, I mean, that's what's just crazy when you look at it. They could be even crazier, you know, than they are now in terms of what he's been able to do. And, and so many times we've seen him take over games, and that to me is impressive. As you noted, got the payday and has gotten better, has become more of a leader, has continued to take things over and take the game over, and is leading the charge. Also, now that Chainer Jones has kind of picked things up, the tandem that they have between the two of them, very impressive. But the other thing that I'm really, really not shocked, I don't want to say shocked because that sounds like almost like I'm taking a shot at him because I'm not, but like his run run game you know the, yes. it, 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 the way that he's played the run game has gone up uh, in a big sense he's added that element to his game he's number three in the NFL at least according to ESPN and run stop win rate you know that to me is impressive he was always the guy you know the knock on him was like oh yeah he's this insane pass rusher but you know what's he gonna do against the run well now he's doing that and he's doing it consistently over the course of the whole season as well so yeah stats and all that are great and everything but he's adding balance to his game which I think is so much more impressive uh, and credit to you in terms of impressive getting that was it yeah, run well, run pass win rate yeah man I, I was a little worried I practiced it on the way down here in the car. Yeah, Not very very well done. But <laughs> on a serious note, I mean, that's one thing we've heard from Max really over the past 12 months is that he kind of wanted to change that narrative a little bit as well. Yeah. And I think he's done that in a very major way where you look at the numbers, obviously back that up. But just the eye test too of yeah. you see him being active in the interior, right? You see him pulling down running backs at the line of scrimmage, if not behind, in terms of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, 19 right now, which is, le- uh, yes, yeah, leads, leads the lead. NFL. I mean, he has been active, and I think one thing that we don't talk enough about, and it's kind of hard to put it in a statistical sense, is Max is the unquestioned leader of that defense. Yeah, he is the energizer, but in many senses, he's the you know the leader of this team. He's the emotional heartbeat of this team. He's the guy that is going to be that vocal rah rah pound my you know pound my chest, get guys going type of dude. And every team needs a few of those guys. 100%. And the Raiders are very very fortunate to have the one that they do in Max Crosby. Yeah, tone setter, man. That's 100%. really what it comes down to, you know, and. And for him still being as young as he is, too, to be able to do that, you have to be so fired up. I mean, again, as we noted, uh, last year, first Pro Bowl. This year, he follows it up with another one. So, you know, again, sky's the limit for how many this guy can get if he continues to play like this because he's shown that it's repeatable and he's continuing to learn. And no matter who it is that's opposite him, you know, obviously we saw it with Unique last year, learned and grew a great bond with him. Also now look at the man crush that he and Chandler Jones yeah. have, you know. And so, you know, he's learning from some guys that have had a lot of success here in the league as well. So you got to love that aspect of it, that he's also not only just the stud, but is able to learn and add elements to his game from so many different players. And to your, your other point, Jesse, he's 25. Yeah. Crazy. Like, this is not a dude who's, you know, pushing 30. He is 25. I still, yeah. don't, I just still don't think physically that Max has entered his prime yet, no. right? I think we're a few years away from that. And, and you, we talk about everything that Max has dealt with off the field, on the field, all that. But this is also, we talk about Devontae being in year one in the system. This is also Max's first year in yeah. Patrick Graham's system. <laughs> so if this is what year one looks like, imagine what year two is going to look like. And it's Max crazy. has talked about so much uh, the consistency of his plan, the consistency of his program, the consistency of his approach in everything that he does. Yeah. Well, now we we fast forward ahead to this time next year we, when he's at a full, call it at that point, 18 months in Patrick Graham's system. Crazy. I mean, this dude's only going to get better. Only going to get better. No, he is. And we talk about the motor with Max. And one thing I'm just thinking of as we're talking about this is I, I would love to see the stat. You know, every now and then they'll come out and be like, oh, X player ran X yep. amount of miles in the game. I'd really want to know what Max's number is for the entire season, at least up to this point. I'd be willing to bet 
if if he's not number one, he's top three. Has to be. You know? And so that alone as well is like, hey, look, this guy isn't just like running out there, all right, hey, I didn't get to the quarterback, or oh, the run play kind of took off down the field past me. Like he's still chasing it down, you know? So that, again, that motor that just doesn't stop, which I know is so cliche to talk about and all that stuff, but it's like it's true with this guy. But it's Max is the epitome of like not giving up on a play yeah, either. Right? Yeah. I mean, we even go back to Sunday, right, where he gets that hit on Jacoby Myers to, I, I mean, who knows if that impacted the yeah, trajectory hey. of the ball, but it certainly didn't It didn't hurt. Not at all. You know what I mean? And that's a guy not giving up on a play. Uh, that's a guy understanding like, hey, I'm not, you know, the motor doesn't stop. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And, and like we said, did it really impact everything in the, in the grand scheme of things? Who knows? But hey. you'd rather have that effort. You'd rather have that enthusiasm for playing the game exactly. uh, than not. And Max has told us a million times, man, he goes like, the thing that he loves about football is he's like, it's fun. Like, I enjoy this. And he goes, mm-hmm. when I stop having fun, when I stop enjoying what I'm doing, like, that's when something's wrong. And yeah. I've told him this a million times. There is no one on the field, regardless of what field he steps on, that on a game day is having more fun than Max Crosby. And all. I think it's just very – it's nice to see that a guy who puts everything, his whole you know, his whole heart, spirit, et cetera, into what he does, loves doing it, get rewarded in this type yeah, of way. Yeah, and not only that, too, putting his heart, spirit, all this stuff, like, is able to lead these yep. guys. You see in the mic'd up segment I was just watching, you know, with Chandler Jones, which you guys had from the last game, which – Great placement on the mic there, by the way. Just just wanted to throw that out to your staff. Shameless plug alert. Yeah, that a boy, I mean, Jesse. That's, that's pretty great, not going to lie. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing for me is you, you see his interactions with Max. Like, Chandler Jones, this is a guy, for all intents and purposes, is going to be probably a Hall yeah, of Famer. future Hall of Famer. You know? And, and he and Max are working together like this, and he is looking up to Max so many times. Like, I think he, he realizes, like, Max is the dude for this defense, for this team. Like, he's the tip of the spear. So, that should tell you all you need to know about Max Crosby, that a future Hall of Famer is following him. Yeah, and I think, you know, I know we've talked about this a lot, but Max only in year four, yeah. right? This isn't a guy so who's been in the in the league for seven, eight years. Yeah. This is a guy, and, and to your point about Chandler, a, like a guy like Chandler who's most likely going to end up in Canton when all is said and done. Yeah. Seeing and recognizing in Max, and we, he talked about this before he even came here. He goes, yeah. "I was a fan of Max. Oh, yeah. I was a fan of how he how he attacked his his craft." So now that you have guys who are going to be considered one of the best of their generation that see Max and say, "Okay, this guy's doing it the right way. There's something special here." Yeah. Let me at this point in my career kind of get in line and just follow the big dog. Like that is a very very real, very important thing for not only the the future of Max Crosby but the future of this defense as a whole. Yeah, and also too, the, just talk about, you know, the the love fest with Max Crosby right now, but this is what this is about for the Pro Bowl, you know, giving these guys their flowers 100%. here. 100%. Um but with him specifically too, think about you know, people weren't really talking about pressures mm-hmm. a, a lot. Yes. You know, until last year. You know, that was one of those things where I think pressures really took like a jump and maybe that's just timing in general, but and we're a bit biased here because we obviously cover the Raiders more than any other team because that's our jobs here. But uh, nobody was really talking about pressures in terms of defensive linemen, defenders as a whole. And then Max, the numbers that you see, the crazy numbers from last year and over the years in his tenure here, uh, everyone's saying, look at the pressures that he has. Everyone wants to look at st- sacks and all these things. Then this is what NFL players and NFL coaches are saying about him. Is Everyone always talks about the stats and blah, 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 all this stuff, but the pressures that this guy is able to put up, that's what's impressive to them. You know, And, and that, to me, is where you realize, you know, again, the respect that he's got, but the fact that this dude essentially legitimized another stat. A thousand percent. And, and I think that the other part of it, too, and it's kind of going back to Chandler a little bit, but the fact that Max is now having this reputation from people around the league, right? It's one thing if, if yeah. you and I and the people that cover this team on a daily basis, the guys in that locker room say, yo, Max Crosby is the dude. Keep an eye out on him. Yeah. He's, doing, he's doing things at a crazy clip. But when you have people around the league, when you have coaches, general managers, when you have your kind of top tier offensive weapons that say, you got to keep an eye out for 98, that I think just speaks to the fact that Max is doing something that, candidly, I don't I don't think we saw coming out of the skinny no. kid from Eastern Michigan. No, and that's the thing, like this body type is just, yeah. you know, it's wild and what he's grown into with it and the things that he's able to do with that length and everything, uh, you know, and adding the element of power to it as well, being able to bull rush guys now, you know. Uh, as a, again, we keep going back to the age thing, but it's like he's only going to continue to add those layers into his game and continue to learn from a guy like Chandler and, and whoever else you know he plays with along you know and over the years here. So 
I, I'm just excited to see the trajectory for him. And it's kind of cool, you know, as a reporter in this business to follow guys like that, to think, hey, if he continues doing what he's doing, this is a guy that at some point, again, don't want to put the cart before sure. the horse here, but could also be hearing his name, you know, going to the Hall of Fame. And so that's that's really cool, uh, you know, early on to be able to see that type of thing and see a guy not only do it on the field, but off the field be as good of a duty as, yeah, as well. Yeah, doing it the right way, yeah. 100%. Speaking of another guy that has done it the right way, both on and off the field, yeah, man. Josh Jacobs, he's pretty back, good at football, yeah, huh? Back-to-back <laughs> Pro Bowls for him, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, and I think you look at on a very human level, and you and I have talked about this before. How far away does the the uh, the Hall of Fame game in Canton now seem? Man, seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, and, and especially when all of us are talking about, hey, it's going to be running back by committee. Myself included. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Me too. I remember us talking about it on the training camp pod. And any time I had a mic in front of me and someone asked me about what it's going to be like in the running back room, I'd always say, hey, look, we know it's going to be a running back by committee. And then you see what happens in the Hall of Fame game, and you're like, that just tells you right there. That's exactly mm. what it's going to be. And Josh Jacobs was like, oh, you guys forgot about me, huh? Yep. You forgot what I can do? Yeah. He's like, all I'm going to do now is go out, lead the league in rushing, uh, be it. essentially the catalyst for everything that Man. this team wants to do offensively, uh, be really the engine that makes this whole thing go. And he's been, he been spectacular. Yeah. I mean, I think he is. I don't want to say it's been a surprise about how good he's played this year, but it's kind of been a surprise just that he has done so much with his opportunity because yeah. and Coach McDaniel's been asked about it too. He goes, yo, when are we going to see Zeus? Are we going to see any of Zamir? And he goes, I can't take 28 off the field. Yeah. Like, what do you guys want me to do? There is no way I can take him off the field. And, and you just look at the numbers. Like I said, lead the le- excuse me, leads the league in rushing, clear of Derrick Henry by almost 200 yards. And he, like I said, has been the catalyst for when this team is good, when the 2022 versions of the Las Vegas Raiders are rocking and in sync, it coincides with Josh Jacobs getting his touches and pounding the rock. 100%. And then you also look at the game against the Seahawks, having like his big, you know, quote unquote moment right there. I mean, that run is forever going to be burned into Raider Nation's yeah. minds, you know? And so that, you know, ha- having, because you always, you know, think about, well, you know, when a guy goes, and I know the, the Heisman and a Pro Bowl aren't the same thing, but just when you, a guy's going on his Heisman run, you look for those like Heisman mm-hmm. moments. I mean, that's that's what Josh Jacobs had right there, just that burst. I mean, that run is crazy. Doing it in Seattle, too, a place like that, being able to silence them. Really, really you know? close to the uh, the timing of the Bo Jackson run as well, yeah. just on the calendar. A lot of weird similarities Craziness, there. right? Yeah. And, and, again, you know, you look at all the running backs and the history that this organization has as well, and this guy's kind of establishing himself as like, hey, look what I'm able to do as well, and trying to kind of put himself in that conversation, too. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up kind of a historical sense of what Josh is doing. Really similar to Devontae. The Raiders, obviously, a place an organization that has a rich history of Hall of Famers, guys that have done it at an elite level and beyond an elite level. Yeah. Uh, but let's just look at this. Josh Jacobs versus Marcus Allen through 14 games, right? And we're talking about Marcus Allen's 1985 season here. Josh Jacobs, 1,495 yards. Marcus Allen, 1,527. Yards per attempt, Josh has him by just uh, about, about a half yard. More rushing touchdowns uh, and 600-yard games compared to, uh, to nine for Marcus Allen. Uh, just a quick note there. Marcus Allen, that year, uh, won AP NFL and MVP. So, I mean, you Man. look at what Josh is doing, and I think also on a personal note for Josh, Josh has talked a lot since he really got here about how valuable Marcus Allen's input has been as a mentor, as a guy for him to, to kind of uh, exchange ideas with. And now he is in the conversation of a Hall of Fame one of the best guys that has ever walked through this building. Very, very cool and very impressive. Yeah, and it, I'm just, by the way, to Marcus, man, impressive. Nine 100-yard games in the season. And Josh, I mean, Josh Barewell could do he that. He could get there. To go. He yeah. could get there, yeah. That, that number just sticks out to me on, on that graphic there. It's, it's just crazy. But, uh, yeah, with Josh, too, the thing to me that, that is the most impressive about all of his numbers and everything like that is the yards per attempt. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's, that's what you look at to see really, like, really how effective is this guy being. Uh, you know, and at 5.1, I mean, that's that's just incredible. It's nuts. You know, and, and also, too, I mean, you see any time that they bust out those next-gen stats of, like, yards after contact and things like that or, or you know, f- you know, forced missed tackles, all those things, Josh has always been up there. Um, you know, and, and so to me, the way that he's continued to do that, like, guys obviously know, okay, this guy's hard to tackle. You think maybe they start working on more of that. Well, he just continues to shed tackles left and right and does it running so violently. I mean, I don't know that there's another runner in the league – that just runs as mad as he does on a consistent basis. I mean, we talk about the 5.1 yards per attempt. How many times have we been in the third quarter, early fourth quarter, and that number's like six? Yeah. Like, that number's north of six, and then they bring Josh in to close the game out. I mean, he is... May, he is the epitome of making the most of your opportunities, and he has made it damn near impossible for Josh McDaniels to take him off the field. And in the in 2022, when running backs seem to, you know, you don't have the, a ton of these bell cow guys anymore, Josh has made it impossible to give other guys in that room any type of burn. Yeah, and also, too, not, uh, I just was looking it up as you were talking, 
Josh is 5'10", 220, which like isn't small. That's like pretty standard yeah. for an NFL running back. But I mean, pound for pound, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like he, he's not like he's like Derrick Henry out there, like 250 yep. pounds. You know, and no shade at Henry. Like, but like man, find me a guy that's 5'10", 220 that runs harder than Josh Jacobs. I don't think you're getting it. I don't think you're gonna find one. I, yeah. I think the other part, just kind of as we we blow out a, a little bit, where you look at the offensive line combinations that Josh has had to run through, and I think we heard during the press conference the other day. I think the Raiders are at 13 offensive line combinations so in 2022 with three games left to go. Yeah, the fact that Josh has, you know, it, it'd be one thing if you. I'm trying. I go back to like that 2016 season a lot, right? I think that's kind of the barometer for me on a lot yeah. of things. The Raiders had, if not the best offensive line in the NFL, they were a close number yeah. two. And that offensive line did not change. It was the same five guys from week one to week 17. That has not been the case no, for the 2022 not. Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. So you throw Josh in, in an ever-changing mix of the big fellas up front, and, and you know better than I that for a running back to have faith in the big boys to get you where you need to go, you that doesn't happen overnight. No. And so the fact that Josh has been able to do what he's done, put up these absurd numbers with that constant rotation up front, incredibly impressive. Not only that, doing it while banged up too. Yes. You know, him specifically. Obviously the offensive line's been banged up too, but like with him, I mean, doing it with the finger thing and he's obviously been questionable for how many weeks. I mean, a questionable Josh Jacobs is the best running back in the NFL. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's just wild. Uh, so, I mean, the fact that he's been able to do it, that was always kind of the knock on him. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, he's a great running back, but he hasn't Can't made it for healthy. a full season. Yep. Exactly. And, and so now he's doing that. Obviously a bit motivated probably to do that for some paydays, you know. But, uh, man, I mean, just being able to do it in the year when you absolutely need to. And also one thing I was thinking about is uh, at the beginning of the year he talked about how this offseason he really took everything a little more seriously. You know, his diet, things like that, his training, you know, he really honed that stuff in. Um, that to me, again, as we talk about Devontae and we talk about Max and everything like that, like, what's next for Josh Jacobs? If this is the first offseason that he's really dialed his nutrition in and you hear everyone that talks about how much of a difference nutrition makes, I mean, what's he going to do after he's eaten like this for, you know, a full year, another full offseason and continue to fine-tune his game and all that stuff? Uh, impressive. And then also you add in the fact that he's done this in a system that has not relied on one running back in as long as I can remember. Name one New England running back that has been a bell cow. None. Exactly. I mean, he, what Josh has done is essentially forced Josh McDaniels in the best possible way to reevaluate the yeah. way he handles a running back position. Yeah. Which is crazy to think. You think about all the success Josh had in New England, uh, and I know he doesn't want us to harp on that, yeah. but you historically look at everything that Josh did, and to your point, it was all running back by committee. Well, this guy who's having a historic season has forced the head coach to reevaluate what that looks like. Yeah. Which is wild to think about. It's crazy. Incredible to think about. Not only doing that, but also, you know, in a year when they don't pick up the fifth year option, he goes out and says, All right, I'm gonna make sure and kind of force your hand that yeah. you gotta pay me or somebody else has to, you know. And we and we talk about Max being only twenty five. This dude's twenty four. Exactly. It's crazy. Like, it's not like he's not even approaching thirty yeah. yet. And that's not even getting there. That's the thing too, is I mean, as a running back, you know, obviously they talk about, you know, the shelf life on a running back not necessarily being so high and everything like that. But Josh is a guy that in college wasn't that bell cow, didn't get all those mm -hmm. carries, all those things. I covered him when he was at Alabama, and it's like you're watching him and, and what he did with those carries and those opportunities was always incredible. And you're thinking, like, man, how's he not getting more chances? But you're seeing that kind of pay dividends now where he's still able to go do that. And so you wonder what the future holds for him as he continues again, like I said, to fine tune his offseason routine and and just his his well being routine of, you know, making sure he stays healthy. You know, one thing that I, I want to bring up too, just on Josh real quick, is that we've talked about, you know, we talked about Devontae and about how defensively, if you're a defensive coordinator, you look at the Raiders skill position guys specifically out wide and say, Hey, we're not gonna let 17 beat us. Right. Yeah. And Devontae has won a lot of those chances. Well, the same goes for the running back room, yeah. right? The same. I mean, really, you can make the argument that the Raiders are at their best, and I've said this all year, when Josh is getting his touches, 100%. right? And I think that really the numbers kind of bear that out. Josh has hit the, uh, the century mark six times this year, right? The Raiders are 5-1 and one in those games. Yeah. The lone exception is that Kansas City game where he was like, what, 125, like 130. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains that when Josh gets going, when this offense finds a groove with him being essentially the lead singer of the band – Good things happen. Yeah, and because it gets those teams out of that too high shell, you know, makes them devote more guys to the run, makes those matchups easier for Devonte or mm -hmm. Mac Hollins, or you see a similar situation where, granted, I know they were in a too high shell there uh, when Carr threw the pass to um, Keelan Cole, uh, you know, to tie the game up. 
but still, like it puts teams in a bind. And obviously, there was no threat of a run there and everything like that. But um, you know what Josh is able to do opens things up for this receiving core and everybody else around him. And that, to me, yeah, that gets this offense humming more than anything else uh, once he's able to do it. We've seen it over the years, you know, not yeah. not just this year. Uh, previous coaching staffs, previous seasons since Josh has been here, when he is playing well and he is on his game, the Raiders do well. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. And it's been a formula that we've talked about all season. When the Raiders can follow the formula, good things happen. When the Raiders get thrown off schedule and perhaps the formula isn't followed to a T, uh, questionable results. That's so great, yeah. Jesse Merrick, we have discussed three guys who are very <laughs> deserving. And you're laughing because you know where I'm going. <laughs> yep. Three guys unquestionably deserve to be in the Pro Bowl. No questions asked. Dudes that have balled out, been the best at their position, yeah. crushing it. Now, there's a few guys, uh, specifically in a position group that I'm very fond of, yeah. that did not get Pro Bowl recognition, and I am upset. Daniel Carlson, A.J. Cole, nowhere to be seen yeah. on, these, on this trio. And I don't get it. I'm upset. I, don't, I, I, I have a hard time understanding, with A.J. in particular, how many games this year has AJ completely not only uh, flipped the field, but put the opposing offense in a position where you look at each other and go, I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah. Specifically with the Raiders offense this year, no, yeah. where we've talked about it, they run the ball, control the clock. There's a lot of field position battling that we, haven't, that we didn't necessarily see a year ago. And AJ Cole has been a legitimate weapon for the 2022 Las Vegas Raiders. A legitimate weapon. And I know that it didn't work out our way on Thursday night, but you, in a pressure situation, on prime time, got to have it. Yeah. What does this man do? He pins the, the, uh, he pins the Rams at their own two-yard two line, arguably the best punt in the NFL in all of 22. And I think, what, for me, he has been so consistent. Mm -hmm. That's the one for me that I have a hard time uh, kind of wrapping my mind around. Where, yes, the, the highlight reel plays, he had another one on Sunday. Yes, him and Matt Collins dancing, doing the mustache thing, doing the gritty. It's fantastic. But I don't know if I can remember a bad A.J. Cole pun. So I'm just baffled. Yeah. I'm confused. What does this guy need to do to go back to the Pro Bowl? It's crazy because he's also got the Pro Bowl hair, the Pro Bowl stash, right? Pro Bowl he's got everything. The stash now. I mean, uh, I don't understand it. I, I don't know. And uh, like, not only that, like he's got the personality. Sometimes it's a it's a fan, you know. But I mean, let's be honest. It's a popularity exactly. contest. And I mean, name a name a more popular punter out there. I don't know one. I think the only more popular punter you could probably find is Pat McAfee. Yeah. who hasn't punted a ball in doesn't about play. Seven so, years. Yeah, exactly. so. yeah. So I, I think in terms of you know the punting brand, AJ Cole mm -hmm. is it. So that's definitely. Uh, you know, shocking to me. You, you go and you look at this. Uh, he's got 50 punts this year. His average is 49 and a half. Long is 67, and he's got 23 punts inside the 20 this year. Um, in terms of, uh, I will say, uh, uh, oh, looking don't at don't do this to me. I know. Jesse. I'm sorry. Don't do it to I, me. I, as much as I don't want to read this, just to, I, I have to. The average is fourth in the NFL, which is still good. The, it's the uh, 23 punts inside the 20 is tied for ninth. That's the one. I, I thought that would be higher, to be completely honest. Sure. Um, sure. Maybe there's like five guys tied for ninth. I don't really know, but uh, that to me, that that I, I, it seems like it should be higher. It should. I don't know. It should. But, and I wonder. And I wonder if someone has to do with the coverage a little bit. Yeah. You know, I've talked about the coverage that perhaps at times has left a little to be desired, and yeah. obviously that impacts AJ's numbers there. But I just I don't get it. And, then, and going to Carlson too, man. Like, what more could this guy do, right? <sighs> I mean, what more do you need to see from yeah. him to put him in the Pro Bowl? And candidly, like my my upset is probably more that Daniel is out this year. AJ got his nod last year, very yeah. well deserved. I think there's an argument to say AJ's been better this year, but you know, AJ got his flowers a year ago. But what does my guy Daniel Carlson have to do? What does he have to do to get in the Pro Bowl? And I think what what's interesting too is that you look at uh, Carlson when all is said and done, at least for the first portion of his career. The numbers are going to be fantastic. Yeah. Historically speaking, uh, accuracy-wise, 50-plus, clutch kicks, all that stuff, they're going to be superb. But when all is said and done, the postseason accolades likely won't be there because he is always, for at least portion, this portion of his career, going to fall behind Justin Tucker. Mm -hmm. And so it's an interesting case study that you and I can debate 20 years from now over yeah. a brewski or two. But like it'll be really interesting to see how history uh, kind of plays and, and judges uh, Mr. Carlson. That's the thing. I mean, you look at you look at kickers over the years, and <clears throat> any of the debate is always about the postseason things that they've done, and uh, you know, or, or having those. And, and I would make the argument real quick though that the Pro Bowl is a regular season award. Yeah, very true. That's actually a very good point. I, I'll give you that one. Um, and I mean, uh, we talk about the consistency at which that AJ Cole does his job. 
Daniel Carlson. I mean, what was the streak? I, I oh my gosh! I don't know if you remember. I don't remember off the top. We'll have, of my head, we'll have one of our number. our research folks look at yeah. that. But it was incredible. I mean, he was literally within. I think it was four or five of an NFL record. Yeah, I mean, so that alone. I mean, you, you add that into it, and it's like, come on. Uh, he's also tied for third in points this year. 116 points on the year. Uh, he's got a long kick of 57 yards. His extra point percentage is 96.7. Field goal percentage this year, 90.6. Uh, and again, as we talk about just the popularity aspect of it, I mean, I'm sure you'd be hard-pressed to find many kickers over the years, you know, since he's been in the league that have been as consistent as he has been. I guess the, the one thing, too, that I can take some solace in is that the Raiders have a rich tradition of specialists. Yeah. Um, you look at Ray Guy uh, in the Hall of Fame as we approach his birthday, but you look at, at the, the trio of uh, Sebastian Janikowski, Shane Leckler, John Kondo. I can take solace in the fact that it, it at least on paper feels like the Raiders have found that next great trio yeah. uh, in Trent, AJ, and Daniel. That consistency is so crucial. All these guys under contract, they are not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but I just I would love to see Daniel get a little run because, I mean, look at it. We talk about 90.6 this year, 93 last year, 94.3 the year previous. Uh, back to his uh, tenure in Oakland, 94.1. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. I would need I need someone smarter than me yeah. at the league level or someone much more comfortable in the numbers than you and I to explain to me How? what Daniel Carlson needs <laughs> to do to become a pro bowler. Yeah. I need to know. I, I, I wish I could tell you, man, because I, I am surprised. Honestly, we, we talk about the no-doubters in terms of offense and defense, and that's why I phrased it that way because I knew we were going to dive into this one. I know. Yeah. Um, I thought for sure at least one of – AJ or Daniel Carlson would be on this list for the Pro Bowl. Um, you know, it, it's just wild. But again, it, the hype train of, of Justin Tucker and this you know, is, a lot oh, of the guys out there. And this is going to make me even more upset. Uh oh, here we go. All right. So we look at AJ, excuse me, at, uh, at Daniel's uh, kick percentage this year. He was at 90.6, right? Is yeah. that what we had up? Yep. You know what uh, Justin Tucker's is? What is it? Just guess. I'm going to guess it's like. 88 point something. Try go, go a little south. It's really? 85.3. What? Make that make sense. Okay, so now I am mad. Make that make well. sense. I, I'm just as mad as you are, Eddie. That's crazy to me. Like, make it make sense. You can't do it. It doesn't. That's where. I, and I, Daniel Carlson's a likable guy too, as we talk about. It's a fan vote, and you're you know you're you're popular. Maybe, maybe if he's maybe if he's saying opera and wore tuxedos, he'd get in. But I guess so. Yeah. I, I was talking one of my big goals for myself for 2022, as we now approach 2023, and I'm not a big like resolution guy, but one yeah. thing that I really focused on this year was trying to like understand and focus on things, you know, control what you can control, essentially. Yeah. I can't control the fact that Daniel has been uh, wrongly taken away from the yeah. Bowl. I can't do that. I will try to find some peace in that. It still upsets me greatly. Will I probably let it bother me for the rest of the day? Most likely. <laughs> but tomorrow, I will have to, to turn, that point off, turn that portion of my brain off uh, and move on. But one thing, regardless of who's there, we know the three guys that are going to be there representing the silver and black. I think credit to the NFL – because we are now shifting to the Pro Bowl games, plural, yeah. right? So we're going to have a flag football game that you and I talked about will be at Allegiant Stadium. Credit to the NFL for understanding that, hey, the previous iteration of the game was not perhaps the best representation of how to honor and celebrate these guys, yeah. and we're going to mix it up. And I personally am excited for it. Uh, I know that since it's back here in Vegas, it makes your and I's Pro Bowl week a little bit busier yeah, than, uh, than it has in years past, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and I think we got, we got to give the league a little bit of credit for being malleable uh, and being very, very 23. Uh, yeah. in looking ahead. No, yeah. I, I've always been one of those guys, like, I love the Pro Bowl. I know it was a mess. You, you know? and my dad. Yeah. I like, was always, always a big Pro Bowl guy. I've watched every single one since I can remember. Um, so I was a little bummed to see the game go away, but I totally understand why. Uh, and so I am excited to see this new iteration of it and kind of what it looks like. You know, there's still so many questions about what exactly the games are going yeah. to be. Um, but also, too, look, I mean, Flag football is an interesting thing to watch at times, and we're watching these guys of the best in the world at this sport do it. And, and so it's going to be funny because I think they'll be able to mess around a bit more. You mm -hmm. know, and that's what this game is supposed to be fun. Yeah, it's an all-star game. Exactly. So, uh, you know, that that I think is big. And, you know, at times the NFL has been hesitant to, to make changes and do things like that. And so, again, kudos to them for doing it with this, realizing, hey, we have a product that many people believe is broken. Again, I'm not one of them because I love the Pro Bowl. But, uh, you know, kudos to them for going after it saying all right let's make something that the fans are going to enjoy uh that can be much more unique and, and we can roll with it yeah and i think it'll just be a lot of fun to see how this evolves because i feel like yeah. the, the 2023 version of the pro bowl games probably aren't going to be the exact same as the 2024 version nah. right and i think now that the nfl nfl has shown a uh, 
an ability to be flexible and an ability to change and an ability to understand what people want. I'm really excited to see what, you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, what this looks like, because yeah. I would love to see the, the, you know, the skills competition of who's got, you know, similar to like a dunk contest, right? Who's got yeah. the craziest catch or, or quarterbacks doing like trick throws. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, I would have to imagine is probably the leader in the clubhouse there <laughs> for yeah. who's going to win that. But I think there's a lot of really good opportunities that the league has now in kind of going in this way to not only keep the diehard fans like you and I, yeah. But to show that seven-year-old kid, eight-year-old kid who maybe was, I don't really know about football, but, oh, this is a really fun exactly. celebration and a fun version of what this game represents and what it could be. Yeah, and I think with these games, with the flag football thing, <clears throat> there's probably going to be more of those, like, you know, Instagrammable or social media a bull, if that's even yes. a word, uh, moments that they can throw out there where you said it's going to capture some young kids, you know, and things like that. They'll see it on there. Um, and it's going to get much more eyeballs, I think, to the Pro Bowl games as a whole. Uh, will, which will be interesting, but also to think about it, like over the last couple of years, again, objectively, I understand the Pro Bowl game has not been as much fun uh, as maybe in years past. Uh, the thing that everyone always looks forward to are the skills competitions mm-hmm. and all those things. So now getting these guys involved in more and more activities like that, I think is going to be fun because we get to see their athleticism really put on display. And here's my question, and I truthfully don't know the answer to this, but they still got to do like Pro Bowl jerseys, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, because the Pro Bowl jerseys, last, the AFC ones last year were it's sick. sick. Yeah. They were really, really I cool. always love seeing those things every year when they bust them out. So I'm sure maybe they'll look a little different, maybe not like full-on jerseys, or, or I don't know. But, well, I guess we'll all kind of wait and see. But it'll be interesting. The thing that I'm thinking of, too, is like in terms of the games as we still wait to yeah. see what it is. But those commercials, remember the ones where the guys are doing the crazy Dude, things? So it's funny you bring yeah. that up because I think there's a, a certain group of people of a certain age that are yeah. here in my age that remember those, Love those so things. vividly. They're like catching so the vividly. ball through the wall yep. and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, was, that stuff was crazy. So like, I want to see some of those things in the Pro Bowl games. Like, I want to see – I think it was Travis Kelsey, which I know is a sore subject here to talk about him on a, on a Raiders podcast. But I want to see guys doing that. You know, I want to see Devontae – throwing his hands through a wall to catch the ball or something something crazy like that. You, you know? know it would be a huge hit, right, and it would play on the nostalgia in the best way is if it was a Devante or a Tyreek Hill or yeah. whoever it was that recreated some of the exact ones from those commercials. Should be. The one where they're catching the ball and it's like, yep. I think it was yep. D-Hop. You know, that yep. thing was crazy. And everyone's debating, is it real, is it fake, all those things. I'll admit, I thought they were all real. Yeah. I thought they were all real. I thought they were. I think now it was a little bit older. I don't know. Ah, who knows? <laughs> but, I mean, if there's any if there's any kind of version of NFL wide receiver Receivers that could replicate those two a T. Yeah. The group we got right now in the league. Hundred percent. Especially totally with those did. fun gloves, man. Yeah, those things, man. They like stick them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun to watch that game. Uh, yeah. At, excuse me, at Allegiant Stadium and the other versions of whatever those games tend to be. It'll yeah. be a lot of fun. Uh, you and I will be there. We'll be breaking it all down, having Heck, some yeah. social media a bowl. Yeah. Right? Is that the term That's we're going? We're going to coin that term. Yeah. We're social media bowl moments. Yeah, cur- yeah. Trademark Jesse Mary. <laughs> uh, but it was going to be a blast. This was a blast too. We appreciate you coming to hang out of with course. us on your off day. Uh, I know this is a busy, busy time of year for all of us. And let us not forget, the Raiders are going to play a football game on Saturday. <sighs> Crazy. So we still have a lot, a lot of things to focus on uh, before we even, you know, fully shift our focus to the Pro Bowl. But I'm glad that we were able to give these guys their due because all three of those guys, a hundred, a thousand percent well-deserved and it's exactly where they should be. So yeah. for my, Eddie Pascal, my guy, Jesse Merrick, everyone back in the studio for making this thing rock. We appreciate you. Uh, and we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow for our usual episode <laughs> of Upon Further Review brought to you by Gore's Light.